something that we publicly don't release, but... <laughs> So we'll talk about what is the overall program look like, the aircraft, the systems, and then I'll talk a little bit about what it means in the long term. So the platform that we're using is a Bombardier 6500. 6, we did an analysis on multiple platforms and chose that platform because of its, its flexibility, its low operating cost, low maintenance cost, and it has a high altitude ceiling, long endurance, and enormous amount of power. With everything on iStar, we still have over 40 kVA of power that we're not using that's available power to the mission system. The good news there is that later on, as other threats come, other things you want to do, we have plenty of power to add to that capability. So the other thing that's really very nice about the uh, Bombardier 6500 mm -hmm. is that it is a complete digital modern cockpit, all under glass. We have the ability to integrate data into the flight deck by working together with Collins, which is part of Raytheon, okay. and that's something that nobody else can do. So another part of the overall iStar is the ground systems. So there'll be two transportable systems that will be used by the Army. And we will integrate that in with the airborne platform, as well as a fixed station, which will be used by the Air Force. So we'll talk about the different sensors. The aircraft has a AESA radar for synthetic aperture radar, SAR, and moving target indicator, so MTI for ground or ship-based targets. Okay. The canoe on the aircraft, or the thing that's on the bottom of the aircraft, can house the radar as well as other sensors. We've provided an option to the Korea government to put a long-range camera. So the other major sensor suite is the signals intelligence capability, or SIGINT, which is comprised of the electronic intelligence, which is seeing radars, seeing things that are not communication types of signals and the communications intelligence or comment focused on communication types of signals, whether those are radios or other means of data transfer. So when we take both of those sensors along with if the, uh, if the camera is utilized, you can take all of that data and merge that data together to give you a almost instantaneous picture of what is going on in the battlefield. So we have designed this to have very open communications to be able to communicate with any of the other systems within Korea, whether those are aircraft, army, ground, ground mobile, fixed, or naval. Another part of it is the long-term support. So we're providing training simulators, a maintenance capability, and the maintenance for the, for the overall platform and everything that is ISTAR ultimately will be KAL. So KAL will take over that and take that, that part of the program all the way to the end of the program. I would like to emphasize mm -hmm. that in the systems, we're doing four aircraft offering. Two of the aircraft will be modified in the United States, and then the other two will be modified here in Korea mm -hmm. by our partners, KAL. The other key item is that KAL, Bombardier, and Raytheon we have an integrated product team, and they, KAL, Bombardier, and Raytheon, they will have sign-off mm -hmm. on the design. Mm -hmm. So we're integrated as a team, and we believe that's very important for the technology transfer so they can modify and then maintain these aircraft over a 30-year period. Uh -huh. Well, we, our offering, we believe, encompasses a lot of things uh, that are beneficial for the national defense and deterrence for the Republic of Korea. We also have a, an outstanding aircraft, which is a Bombardier 6500. We also believe that it's a multi-mission, multi-intelligence aircraft, which is very important. So one of the things about the I-STAR-K is um, it is a, a multi-mission, multi-purpose aircraft. 
designed to truly look at the overall perspective of what's going on in the battlefield and being able to detect those things which may be a threat and then analyzing those threats and then sending that back down to the commanders on the ground. Um, that is a really a key aspect of this. It really, in some of the threat scenarios, it is, it's all about time and speed to react. And for many of the targets that are key, you don't have much time. And one of the things that we've done through some, some advanced AI on the platform is we are letting some of the machines process a lot of the information to get to the point where we can make a decision on the aircraft and react to that within the time frame before the threat strikes. If you don't have that capability where you're processing all of the information together and being able to analyze it almost immediately, you can't react to the threat. That is battle management, command, and control. So in addition to that, the way that this system is designed is that we have a SAR GMTI radar that can pick up a mobile target. If that mobile target moves behind a mountain range, we can still continue the tracking by using the signals intelligence. And that allows us to be seamless in being able to track that target. We have, as if you heard us talk before, we have a license for a US SIGINT system. And it's dictated by the altitude. Straight line of sight calculation at 42,000 feet is 370, roughly 370 kilometers. 45,000 feet, it's 380, 390 kilometers. Because altitude dictates range. Time on station without refueling. When you refuel an aircraft, you leave on station for 45 minutes to an hour. When you're doing that, there's no coverage. And going back to what I said earlier is that you have to be able to react quickly to the targets. You can't react quickly to a target when you're not looking at the targets, you're getting gas. So that was a key. The engines in these new uh, 6500s have a much longer maintenance interval than the engines on the other aircraft. Their 750 hour maintenance interval were most of the engines out there, 400, 500 hour intervals. So those all play into that decision and, and providing Korea with the most cost effective, best performance that we could. And as uh, Bob Blanchard, who was our chief uh, engineer, um, has, has said before that it is a multi-mission open architecture system. And by open architecture, that allows us to have upgrades in the future. It allows us to look at obsolescence and have less obsolescence in the systems. It allows it to be a better performing interactive system overall so that upgrades in the future, if they, they want them, uh, will be very easy to make. That's something that we publicly don't release, but we will provide that information to the government. I will tell you that the cost of the operation and maintenance of the Bombardier 6500 is really half the cost of what, let's say, a 737 would be. So that's very significant. Because of, of that cost, the operations and maintenance cost is so low, it will afford the Republic of Korea a much better opportunity to be able to spend more to eventually update as technology comes along and improve the aircraft itself. In the case of Sentinel, Sentinel is a single sensor aircraft with a very structured build for one purpose, which, which is that sensor. Sentinel was built, it was built to a very narrow set of requirements. And that narrow set of requirements, unfortunately, didn't allow it to have that growth. And if there's a lesson to be learned about that is that doing a very narrow purpose-built singular platform is going to have a limited life because you can't change it. And that's one of the things that we've made this, is to make it as very flexible as possible. We're built to be able to be flexible, to grow without modification of the aircraft. And that is going to be why we believe that, that the system 
will continue to evolve uh, because we're building it very similar to some of the other programs that we work on that have been around for 30 plus years. So one of the things that I can tell you is that we already have uh, export licenses, a, a number of them, uh, <laughs> to be able to export this offering to the Korean government. We also have a technical assistance agreement in place to provide the tech transfer to KAL. We will eventually get an additional one so that they have full capability to do uh, and work with us on the, on the design, software design, modifications, upgrades, etc. One of our objectives is to have as much Korean content as possible on this aircraft. KAL, our partner, has really helped us with that. They too are looking at small, medium enterprise companies to help get onto our particular platform so that we can have that increased Korean content. We have a target goal of a minimum of at least 30% of, of this being, being Korean content. We're close to that goal. We believe we'll be over that goal, but that's very important to us because that's all incumbent upon what we do with KAL, is to be able to make sure that they feel comfortable. So we're going to be relying on KAL to perform the majority of that.